Before we start creating web API using Express.js, in this lecture, let's try to understand what a web API is and why it is such a good option for creating web and mobile applications nowadays. In this lecture, I'm first going to compare static and dynamic websites with a web API powered website. And then I will talk about web APIs in detail. So let's first understand what we mean by static website. Now keep in mind that whenever we create a website or a web application, there will always be a client and a server. Now, a static website is the simplest type of website and in case of a static website, developer uploads the final ready to be served file of a website onto the web server. These files usually contains HTML, CSS, JavaScript and images of the website. And these are the exact files which the server will send to the client that is to the browser when the website is requested. And the browser will then render these files as a web page. So keep in mind that in case of a static website, there is no work done on the server and there is no backend code. And there is also no backend application whatsoever running on the server. The server is simply serving static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, etc. Now you might say, wait, when there is JavaScript on the page, then there are usually dynamic effects like animation and other things, right? Well, that dynamic that you mean there, it's a different kind of dynamic. It is in the context of front-end development. For example, showing animations on the web page, handling events on the front-end, etc. That is different kind of dynamic. But when we talk about web applications, which has a backend, there, the word dynamic has nothing to do with effects on the web page or animations or anything like that. In that case, dynamic simply means how the web page is generated on the server. In case of a static website, the server serves the static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. And hence, we call it as static website. Dynamic websites are different from the static websites as they are usually built on the server. So, just like we learned in the last lecture, Dynamic websites usually contains a database. Then, in case of a dynamic website, we also have a backend application running on the server. This backend application can be built using Node.js, Python, PHP, C Sharp, etc. Basically, a backend application is developed using a backend technology. And a backend technology can be PHP, Java, Python, C Sharp, etc. Now, this backend application fetches data from the database and together with the predefined template, it builds each page that the user requests dynamically based on the data coming from the database. So here we are not serving static HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Here we are building the website. We are generating a template which contains HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but it also contains the data which we have retrieved from the database. So each time the browser requests a page, the web page is built as HTML, CSS and JavaScript file and is sent back to the browser. And then the browser renders that dynamically generated HTML, CSS and JavaScript and shows it to the user. Now, this whole process is called as server side rendering because here the web page which is rendered in the browser, it is created on the server. So this type of website is called as dynamic website because the content of the website is built based on the data coming from the database. And this content can change all the time according to the content in the database or user's action on the web page. For example, if you are logged into Twitter, it will show you a completely different page than what it will show to other users with different tweets, right? And you will also see different tweets tomorrow than it is showing today because tomorrow there will be new tweets by other users. That means new data in the database, which will be rendered in the web page dynamically. And this is what dynamic websites are all about. If you go to a blog post there, you will always see the same content, no matter when you visit the page or what you do there. So that means that this blog post is a static web page. Keep in mind that dynamic websites are often called as web applications. So usually when you hear the term web application from someone, they mean a dynamic website with some functionalities like logging and logout of the application, getting user profile, searching for stuffs, etc. Traditionally, static and dynamic websites were the only two types of websites. But in recent years, because of how powerful the browsers have become on the client side, we see more and more websites that are basically built using web APIs. So let's quickly see how these API powered websites work and how we can use Node.js to create such API powered websites. Now API stands for application programming interface and on a very high level 
API is a piece of software that can be used by another piece of software in order to allow applications to talk to each other. In simple terms, an API allows two or more software to talk to each other. So just like a dynamic website, in case of an API powered website also, we have database on the server and we have an app that fetches data from the database each time a client makes a request. So in that sense, the API powered website is actually quite similar to the dynamic website. That means both works dynamically. Now, the big difference here is that with web API, we only send the data in the response to the client. We do not send HTML in the response. This data which we send in the response is usually in the JSON format. Okay, so in case of a web API, we send only JSON data in the response to the client and we do not send the entire website built using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, when building a web API powered website, there are always two steps involved, building an API and consuming that API on the client side. In the first step, we create an API which is hosted on a server. Now, on the client side, the website is assembled by plugging the data that we receive into some sort of template. These templates are usually built using some front-end framework or libraries like Angular, React or Vue. So you see, when building an API powered website, the building phase of the website is kind of moved from backend to frontend, or we can also say that it moved from server to client. And this is the reason why many times you will see dynamic websites are called as server side rendered because they are actually built on the server. On the other hand, API powered websites are often called as client side rendered because here the website is built on the client side. Now, the main advantage of using a web API is that it can not only be consumed by the browsers, but also by other clients like iOS app, Android app, desktop app, etc. Let's say we have built a web API with endpoint as procademy.com slash API slash courses. So whenever a user will make a request to this URL, the server will send back data in the JSON format, which contains information about all the courses that is currently hosted on the procademy.com. Now, so far, we have only talked about requests coming from a web browser, but we can also request and consume the exact same JSON data on a native iOS app, an Android app, or even on desktop app for Mac or Windows computer. So as you can see, when we built an API powered website, the possibilities are endless. Here, we simply have one data source, which can be requested and used anywhere and not just the browser. And this advantage we do not have when we built normal dynamic server side rendered website. In a server side rendered dynamic website, it returns HTML with CSS and JavaScript file, which can be passed and rendered only by the browsers. And because of that, with server side rendered dynamic websites, we are trapped with a single platform that is the browsers. Now, this might not be a problem in many cases, but for complex products that requires, let's say, a website, an iOS app, and also an Android app, in that case, the web API is the best solution. So, in this example of Procademy.com, I can build an API, and then I can build an API-powered website, iOS app, and Android app, etc., and get the data on all these clients with just one data source. Also, these APIs can also be used by third-party applications. For example, there are some companies which only sell access to their APIs so that it can be used by other applications. Now, Node.js is an absolutely perfect tool for building web APIs and it is very commonly used for that. Of course, Node.js can also be used to build a dynamic server-side render websites, but most often we use Node.js for building web APIs and web API powered websites. Keep in mind that web APIs are the most common type of APIs out there. But in fact, APIs aren't only used to send data and they aren't always related to web development. We learned that API stands for Application Programming Interface. So the application in the API can actually mean many different things as long as the piece of software is relatively standalone. Take for example, the node file system or the HTTP module. We can say that there are small pieces of software which we can use and interact with by using their API. For example, when we use read file method of FS module, we are actually using the FS API. That's the reason why you will sometime hear or see the term node API used for node.js core modules. 
okay so the fs module of node.js or the http module of node.js they are also called as node apis another example of an api would be the apis provided by browsers for example the fetch api or the get element by id method etc so when we manipulate the dom in the browser we are not actually using the methods provided by the javascript instead we use the dom apis which the browsers exposes to us so these methods which the browser provides they are also called as apis we usually call them dom apis and in the same way when we create a class in any of the programming language and in that class when we define properties and methods and in order to access these properties and methods we create an object of the class and when we create the object of that class on that object we can access the properties and methods of that class so these methods which we define for a class that can also be considered as an api so keep in mind that api does not always mean web apis it can mean many different things all right so in this lecture we learned what a web api is and how it works now in the next lecture we are going to learn about one of the frameworks which we use to create a web api so in the next lecture, we are going to learn about the REST framework and how we use it to create a web API. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.